Today, I'm here to talk to you about the Crack Pro Mastic machine. First, let's talk about what Mastic is. Mastic is a polymer modified asphaltic patching material. It's comprised of two components. One is the select aggregate that is washed and dried at the factory so that your ratios on the patch are correct. And the other is the polymer modified asphalt binder that holds it all together. Mastic can be used to repair cracks, transverse and longitudinal that are larger than an inch and a half wide. They can be used anywhere that concrete meets asphalt. The concrete joints themselves that have spalled apart. It can be used in alligator areas on pavement or concrete that have broken apart on the corners. And it can also be used around manhole covers and random potholes on your roads and streets. The mastic material was brought over to the United States in the late 1980s from Europe. It was originally used as a asphaltic plug joint repair material on bridges. Uh, as they were using it out there, they realized that if you use a slightly smaller aggregate, it will be able to be used in potholes and spalled concrete corners on the bridges, so it'll remain flexible as the bridge moves. In the last five to 10 years, it's been increasing in popularity in both the private and commercial markets. And now a lot of state entities and municipalities are using it as well on all of your city roads and streets. The Crack Pro Mastic machine is a 300 gallon capacity, and it's designed to be one of the most efficient machines in the entire market. Our target market for this machine is municipalities, private contractors that may be doing large projects, or even down to parking lot repairs and bridge repairs before they seal coat any sort of asphalt pavement. Now let's talk about some of the key features of the Crack Pro Mastic machine. Starting at the front of the machine, we have an adjustable pinnel hitch, tow chains that are standard, a standard seven pin trailer plug-in, and then you have your electric brake box for emergency braking, a fire extinguisher, and a propane holder. One thing to remember is to make sure that your fire extinguisher is within the date range that's specified on the extinguisher itself. Along with checking the fire extinguisher, you're going to want to test the breakaway box by depressing the button, and if it's a solid green light, it's fully charged. The Crack Pro Mastic machine has a 14 half horsepower Kubota diesel engine. We have a superior advantage over our competition due to our fixed throttle on this machine. Every other competitor's machine has an adjustable throttle so that you can adjust it and give the agitation system more power to agitate. With our fixed throttle system, you can get up to 30 hours of work time. We have a redesigned hydraulic system with a cooling fan so that the hydraulics continue to run smoothly and efficiently. And then also our agitation mounting system is one of the easiest to access and work on compared to some of our competitors which have recessed bearings on their agitation and they're very hard to access if you need to change it. Standard grease gun and owner's manual is located mounted to the front of the machine and then we have an optional parts canister if you would like to have spare parts included with the machine. Below the agitation system on the machine is a drip tray of where the material is going to slowly leak out of the packing gland on the agitator and your Beckett burner is protected under a shield so the drippings of the material does not damage your burner in operation. The Crack Pro Mastic machine is an oil jacketed unit. One of our unique features is the loading height of the door. We keep it right at 60 inches so that you can load material on top. It's also got built in supports underneath so that it doesn't hurt the hinges of the loading door as you're placing material on top. And another keynote feature is our safety switch so that when you open the door, material is not able to be splashed out. This actually deactivates the agitator so that no one gets hurt while loading material. Located to the left side of the loading hatch is a pail warmer that you can insert a metal pail into that will be used for touch-up work and also cleaning out your gate on the back of the machine. It recycles the material back in so that there's no material waste. At the rear of the machine we have our Crack Pro control box. It's weather tight. You'll notice inside at the top we have operating procedures and also a QR code that is going to take you to the Sealmaster manual on this unit. Down below we've got multitude of switches here, your main power switch, burner enable letting you know that the burner is firing, burner fail if there's been an issue with the burner going out, um, a high temperature reset if one of the material or oil gauges gets more than 25 degrees out of where its set point is, an interlock light that lets you know if the material gauge and oil temperature gauge is up to temperature that your agitator will begin to agitate, and then we have a tool heater box timer button that is set at five minutes for the tool heater to automatically shut off. On the next row, you've got your agitator, both a mix and application position. This refers to our plow point agitation design. When it's in the mix position, there are spear points in there tearing apart the material and helping it heat up faster. When you switch over to the application position, it's actually going to force that material out the back 
through our six inch gate valve. There is a second option for the toolbox heat that permanently leaves it on. And then we've got switches for our optional aero board, strobe light is standard, and then we have our night work lights that are also standard on each unit. At the top of the control box, we've got a transfer oil digital gauge and a material temperature gauge. Standard on every Crack Pro machine are two overnight heaters. These heaters can be used either for pre-melting the material the night before that you're going to perform work, or if you're done for the day, you can actually keep them plugged in when you get back to your shop or job site. That'll help keep the heat in the machine overnight, and it'll cut off about an hour of heat up time the next morning when you're getting ready to work. We prefer that each of these units have a 30 amp dedicated breaker on each plug, if at all possible. Below the control panel on the rear of the machine, we've got a number of features. Um, the first is that we have our 600 degree rated rear bearing that holds the agitator shaft. This is one that we mentioned earlier that does require five pumps of grease daily and there's a sticker to let you know if you forget about it. The six inch knife gate valve is actually unique to our Crack Pro machine. It's got a heated shroud with a hole from the heat box that's also heating your material. What that does is it softens the material and what we refer to as the soft plug. It'll actually make it easier to dispense before you're going to start your repair work for the day. On the rear of the machine, the air jacketed heated chute is a unique feature to only the Crack Pro Mastic machine. It's heated through the Beckett burner that's melting your material. The blower is wired to constantly stay on and blow hot air into the air jacket of the chute so that you have consistent heat and good material flow without building up onto the chute. This chute with the air jacket is unique because it doesn't have to have a propane fuel source to put your workers in danger or have a heat transfer oil leak if you were to use one of our competitor's machines. One of the great features also to help with chute operation on our machine is we actually have a height adjustment chain that can lock the chute into place on a perfect angle to let material flow off, as well as when you're pulling the chute out, you can use our side-to-side -side locking in chain to make sure that if you're doing any longitudinal drag box applications, it'll lock the chute in place and you won't get any sway while driving down the road. The only propane fired tool on the unit is the touch-up torch. It can be used for cleaning off your tools, drying moisture out of a repaired area before you apply the material, or feathering an edge to make the repair look better. On the left side of the Crack Pro Mastic machine, you've got your hydraulic and diesel fuel tanks. Both are 30 gallon capacity for up to 30 hours of runtime. In front of those is the tool rack that you can hold all of your hot irons in, depending on what the repairs you're doing and what you'll be needing out of the machine. Some of the tools that are associated with the Mastic material include a flat iron that can be used for smoothing out high spots in the material or spreading the material around on an alligator area. You also have the hand drag box which is great for smoothing material out in a wide overband situation, using it to fix manhole covers or spreading it across alligator pavement. This is a dual purpose tool. One side has flat stock on it to help clean out your soft plug of material on the rear of the machine. And then we have the custom shaped chute clean out tool on the other end to make sure you don't have any material buildup in your chute. Finally, if you'd like a slight less bit of overband on a wide crack, you can use the metal V squeegee to spread the mastic across and into the crack so that you have a narrower band. The tool heater on the machine is fueled by a Beckett burner, the same burner that's used to heat the material in the tank. So parts can be interchanged, it makes maintenance a breeze, and that way you also have easy location with it mounted externally. The diesel-fired Crack Pro tool heater box is large enough to accommodate four tools individually stored and located on the rear of the machine. They can be locked into position for transport, and they can also be safely secured if you're heating them up before performing a repair. There is a door located on the bottom of the tool heater box for easy clean-out with a square shovel. You unhook the side of it and folds down to clean out your material that's built up inside after about a week of work. Our machine only offers a diesel-fired burner system for the tool heater. Some of our competitors offer propane-fired, which is a safety hazard. Also, our clean-out tray is one of the biggest areas that's easily accessible, whereas a lot of our competitors are really hard to clean out the buildup of material in the bottom of a tool heater box. Before starting your day working with any mastic material, we highly recommend that you have the proper personal protective equipment with you. We highly recommend long sleeves and long pants with closed toe shoes. High temperature or welding gloves will be suitable for handling the irons. Safety glasses or a face shield if preferred. And if you're in any constructive zone that's active, you're going to want to have a safety vest and hard hat on. Before performing your daily checkups and routine maintenance, 
make sure that you give the machine a once over looking for any leaks or failed parts that you may find before starting the machine. One daily check before heading to the job site is to make sure that your tires are properly inflated and all of your lug nuts are properly tightened. Also something important to remember is there are two to six thousand pound axles on this and it's recommended to repack the bearings every two years. One thing to mention that's worth checking weekly is your heat transfer oil level. Up here located above the heat transfer oil expansion tank is your dipstick for the level of your heat transfer oil. You unscrew this T-handle and it'll tell you the approximate level of how much heat transfer oil is in your machine. Located behind the Crack Pro control box is an analog oil temperature gauge. Not only is this a good backup in case you have any malfunction with your digital gauges, but this is also the place after your weekly heat transfer oil check that you must remove this gauge in order to fill heat transfer oil into the machine. One thing to remember is sometimes when you're out on the road, the crew will run the machine out of diesel fuel. If this happens, there is a bleeder valve located on the fuel pumps of both your Beckett burners. Go to the rear of the machine, turn the machine on, and as the burner is trying to ignite, come back and crack the bleeder valves located on the fuel pumps of the Beckett burners. Drain the diesel fuel out until you don't see any air bubbles and it's a solid stream of diesel. At this point, go back, cycle the machine again, and your Beckett burner should light. Some of the daily maintenance on the machine that you're going to want to remember before starting the engine is to grease your agitation shaft with the included grease gun on the machine. There's also a fitting on the rear of the agitator that needs to be greased daily. The bearing that the shaft is going through only needs to be greased every 600 hours. And also check all of your fluid levels of your engine oil, your hydraulic fluid, and your diesel to make sure it's going to operate properly. After you do your daily maintenance checks on all of your fluids and greasing the agitator shaft, you're ready to start the engine. Insert the key and leave it in the run position until the glow plug light goes out and then you're able to start it. After the engine's running on the Crack Pro machine, make sure to take a glance over at your hydraulic filter gauge. If it's in the yellow area, it's starting to accumulate particulates and if it goes into the red area, it does need replaced. After starting the engine on the front of your machine, to continue the operation process, you come to your Crack Pro control box, switch the main power on, and your transfer oil and material gauges are going to start up. Once they start up, depending on the set temperature, you're going to see your burner enable, which is going to light the flame and start heating the material. At this point, you want to switch the agitator into the mix position and that's going to help you heat up your material faster with our plow point design that's cutting through the material and heating it up at a better pace. If you happen to be working at night, this is a time where you can switch on your LED work lights and also your strobe light for protection. If you're going to be on a busy road, make sure that you use the aero board that is an optional feature if you need it. When you're ready to begin repair of the area that you've selected, you're going to use the mastic on. Take your tool out of the tool holder and place it into your tool heater box. In doing this, the material will be easier to work with and the material won't stick to the tools as much as you're using it. The nice thing about our design is that you can actually lock the tools in place for transport even after you're done repairing the area. Once your batch material is heated up, you can either select to turn the toolbox heater on permanently or push the timer switch that'll heat your tools up before you're going to start your repair work. When your material's up to temperature and you're getting ready to apply material, Switch your agitator over to the application position first. That's going to start to force material discharge from inside the machine out of your gate valve. And you're going to want to grab your dual purpose tool of both the chute clean out side and the soft plug poker to pry that soft heated material out of the gate because that material is not up to the same temperature as the rest of the machine. Even though our machine does have the feature that is softened material whereas others you would have to use the propane torch to heat it in order for it to come out. At the end of the day, after your repairs are completed, take the dual action tool and the one side does have the chute clean out option. This is designed to perfectly fit into our chute. Give it a good scrape to clean out any built up material that's in there before shutting down the machine. At the end of the day, after you're done working and all your repairs have been completed, shut off all of your toggle switches for your strobe LED night work lights, aero board, shut your agitator off next, and then shut your main power switch off. After this, move to the front of the machine, and at this time you can shut off the diesel engine. Mastic is designed to melt efficiently, however, this is designed to be a batch process. 
So what you want to do is, let's use for example, you're going to do some longitudinal repair sealing. Fill up the machine in the morning if possible to start with as much hot material as you possibly can. When you're going down the road, it's going to be one of the most high production jobs is a longitudinal seal. And what you're going to want to do is to drop the material to about the agitator bar position, pull off to the side and reload it with material before emptying your tank fully in order to have that hot material help you melt the cold material more efficiently. Another thing to mention is that when you're doing a batch process of mastic, you generally want to know about how much you're going to use for the day because the heat up of this machine, although it is the most efficient, when you're heating through a solid chunk of cold material, it's going to take multiple hours if you let the tank be full and the material get to an ambient temperature. Let's say at the end of the day, it's two o'clock and you have a pop-up shower. Due to our standard overnight heaters, Bring it back to the shop. If the machine's three quarters of the way full, make sure that you plug those in so that your heat up time in the morning is only around an hour and a half like a normal heat up day would be. If you don't do this, that'll really stretch into those multiple hours of heat up time that it's gonna take due to the ambient temperature of the material being so cold overnight. In order to better prepare for the amount of material you're gonna need for a day, make sure to use the Sealmaster calculator on the Sealmaster app. That way that you know you don't wanna overload your machine and end up with a large amount of material left at the end of the day and have a long heat up for the next time you're gonna use it. Now that we've showed you the basic operation of the machine and some of the key features, we're gonna go into showing you how to actually repair a couple of different areas regarding manhole cover, longitudinal drag box, the Sealmaster applicator cart, potholes, doing the repair of the potholes and lifts, and an alligator repair. When doing a mastic repair in any area, you wanna make sure that the area is clean of any moisture, dirt, or debris either a wire broom or backpack blower or compressed air can clean the area sufficiently to do your mastic application. The Sealmaster drag box comes in four different sizes and custom sizes can be made if need be. The first thing to do before you do any longitudinal sealing is to make sure that your relief plate on the back of the box is properly adjusted to get a good overband of material and prevent rollout. Next you want to drop the chute down in on the bottom of the chute there is a pin with a washer. You want to make sure that washer is sitting on top of the selected slot in the drag box to take the weight off of the chute itself. You can use your side to side adjustment chain to lock it into place so you don't get any sway of the chute. One of the last tips I recommend is make sure you have consistent driver speed to prevent any rollout of the material as you're pulling a drag box down the road. If you want to apply mastic material with the Sealmaster applicator cart or you'd like to just drop material directly into your repaired area, you can do this by removing the chute. First thing you want to do is remove the pin at the trailer hitch mount location. Next you're going to remove the chains that both lock the chute in place side to side as well as your height adjustment chain. After removing the chains, the chute will slide right out of the trailer hitch and you're ready to apply material without your chute. Before applying the material, there is a small spot on the rear of the machine that is gonna have cooler material than the rest. So you're gonna to need to clean out the material before applying the mastic on your repair. You're gonna to wanna to take the agitation system and turn it in the off position. Open the rear gate. One of the great features as you've seen is the material is already pre-softened due to our heat shroud feature on the gate valve that provides heat to that cold plug, unlike com competitors where you have to take a torch and heat up the material for it to come out. If needed, there is a clean out tool that can be shoved in to move the softened material and let more material come out. After it's flowing smoothly, close your gate valve and you can put the bucket in our pail warmer to recirculate the material and not waste any. One of the great tools that you can purchase alongside your Crack Pro Mastic machine 
is the Sealmaster Mastic Applicator Cart. This cart is designed for dispensing mastic material only. You cannot melt the mastic and apply with this unit. This machine holds approximately 13 gallons of material and it's designed to fit directly under our gate valve to fill it straight from the machine. One thing to remember is when you're filling the applicator cart with material and also when you're applying material with the applicator cart to make sure you watch your temperature and do not overheat the material when it's in the applicator cart. This machine has an attached drag box that goes along the side to create a perfect overband when applying the mastic material in a large crack. Each unit has a clean-out tool included on it so that you can scrape the inside material left with no buildup. In most thin applications of the mastic material, traffic can be open to it in approximately 15 or 20 minutes. It'll become detackified and it'll be solid for traffic to drive on. A manhole cover is a great application for a mastic repair. A manhole cover that is raised above the pavement surface that in the northern states, it can be hit with plows while the trucks are snow plowing in the winter time. And it's also gonna continue to break apart the asphalt. We're gonna show you how to repair one here in a simple format. One of the best tools for this application is going to be the box loot. One of the important things when doing a manhole cover repair is to set the edge of your box loot right on the manhole cover. That's going to give you a nice waterproof seal up along the edge of the manhole while also protecting the asphalt around it. After you complete the seal one time around, you can continue to work the material that's excess and continuing in the same pattern, or try and go back to where you were just coming from to fill in the voids. Continue to work the product with the box loot until there's no material remaining in your tool. When doing a mastic repair in any area, you want to make sure that the area is clean of any moisture, dirt, or debris. Either a wire broom or backpack blower or compressed air can clean the area sufficiently to do your mastic application. Sunken distressed areas and potholes are one of the most common repairs that mastic can perform. Anything over two inches in depth, you want to do in multiple lifts. That way the aggregate doesn't settle out to the bottom and you have a flexible yet structural repair. You'll see that when the mastic is coming out in gravity form, it is self-leveling when it goes down between 380 and 400 degrees. We're first going to apply a lift of mastic material, let it cool for between 20 to 25 minutes, and then we're going to apply a second lift of the material to level out the patch perfectly. After you've waited for your mastic material to cool down, you can take your drag box and do the finish lift to make it a nice and clean patch. We're going to go over the whole entire edge to make it sealed to strong pavement.
Using the flat iron after you've completed some of your repair is super important to blend the patch. Make sure to work the material as quickly as possible so that it doesn't cool down and become hard for you to maneuver. After the repair is completed, wait until it's approximately 250 degrees and broadcast some Black Beauty sand over top if it's going to be seal coated over to better adhere the seal coat to the mastic. Alligatored areas are one of the most common repairs with mastic. The mastic's going to waterproof and also hold together the alligatored area to prevent any more distress if possible. One of the easiest tools to use on this area is the drag box. You're going to want to fill the box and try to complete the entire repair without lifting the box off of the ground. Now if you have to reposition with the box, you're going to want to overlap on top of the old material you just laid down to prevent any high spots. One important thing to remember when using this on alligator areas is you want to try and get the mastic to sound pavement. After you're done with the drag box, use your flat iron to level out any high spots and make a uniform finish. Mastic applications can be performed on alligator areas, large cracks, pothole repairs, bridge abutments, and even concrete spalled joints. Contact Cody Hale myself or Job Davis and we can come out and assist with you doing live demonstrations in the field.